Okay, welcome back to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3Dtech.com. In this episode, we're going to be doing the four-shot version. So we've already checked hover, uh, and we're all good to go. And uh, unfortunately, the battery's too low on the tablet to really get screen recording, so you're just going to have to, you know, believe me when I say I'm going to do this by, by quarters rather than thirds this time. So with everything being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take off. And, and pretty much like the last flight, I'm just going to do a quick walk around, make sure everything looks okay. Nothing's come loose or no wobbling or major toilet bowling. Again, I like to give it this time to kind of sit in a little bit, see if it's going to do something crazy. I found usually they do it within the first couple minutes of flight. If you got a bad compass calibration or something. So that's why I like giving it this a little bit of time and do the walk around. So. With that said, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take this up just right about here. I'm just going to do like in the other video, I'm going to go up around 150 feet or so. I'm hitting in 150, so there, there I'm pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I want to start, I don't know if you can see it, but so my bird is pointing straight down because I'm going to do it in, in 25 degree, uh, you know, uh, increments. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my first pano. So this is going to go through 21 pictures, sort of like the, uh, the one-third version. And again, with the glare, I don't know if you can see it, but there's not, not too much to see outside of the... Because it turns, I don't know if you can see this, but it turns almost uh, 25 degrees uh, in, during its pano process. And now it's turning back. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I get enough overlap in the pano to get a solid 360 image. So uh, we're about halfway done with the first 21. by one quarter, about 25, or uh, now it's 90 degrees. What am I talking about? 25 degrees. I'm hallucinating. Sorry about that. I'm at 90 degrees. So go ahead, kick off the next panel. So another 21 images. So what's this going to do? This is going to give us, what, 84 images to work with. So this is going to be a very big image, folks. Uh, hopefully by the time we're done. So I am still wondering, I have to do some experimentation. I wonder if that sunshade isn't blocking off part of this. I'm going to have to do a flight without it. Uh, because some of the pictures, it seems when the, the, the camera points up, for it, that under control, the camera points up further than what it does under manual control. And so I'm just wondering if that, that isn't hitting that sun shield. And so we've completed that one. So now we're gonna we're gonna yaw it around for our third run. And so if you notice, I've got the bird basically pointing straight up. I want to bring it back this way, just a few touches. And then I'm gonna kick off this panorama. And so this is the third third of four. So hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad. I've got uh, a little bit of wind gusting up. I'm trying to make sure I kind of stay out of it. I have to figure out a, a good way to... Uh, I love this run cam in the hat cam, but I wish I could get an external mic or something for it. I've built a wind guard for it, um, but you know, even with that wind guard, I still get some wind noise, and depending on how I get it, you know, so I'm really trying to figure out how to do away with that because it really does spoil the footage. And so again, I'm hitting 20, and the sun's dropping behind some clouds. Maybe we can see this a little bit better. All right, so we're done. So we're now going to go around. we do our last set, and we're going to go 90 degrees from that. And I'm going to touch off, and so this is now going to be the last sequence. Um, I, I, what, I'm, what I'm happy about is it doesn't seem to consume a lot of battery. Uh, early on, I had heard uh, the panos 
consumed a lot of battery, but that has not been my experience. Um, you know, I think it's actually worked very well. I mean, power-wise, it's been very conservative power-wise. So, look at those clouds. But again, I think that, that sunshade might be getting into the picture in, uh, in, in, in automated control with the... Uh, yeah, I really think so. Alright. That's pretty much set. So, uh, I'll tell you what. Let's head over to the computer and see how all these pictures look. Okay, we're here at the computer and we've now loaded all 84 images in. So we have 84 images down here in the corner, which created a 360 degree panorama. And we've now achieved 173.9 degrees with four uh, 180 panoramas collected from the Spark, which is really simply amazing that uh, it's such a big jump from the last time. So this is pretty impressive. We still have the holes where the actual spark, you know, kind of sat in space here and here. Uh, obviously like a cylinder going up and down. Uh, but the, the, the views are actually amazing. Now, for some reason with regards to uh, how it flips around in the viewer, it's kind of an interesting um, diatribe there or something. How it, you know, twists around. But... Uh, definitely a lot more uh, image uh, in here and it was able to create a lot a lot more complex image too so I'm pretty impressed with this I, I'm gonna have to play around a little bit more with it but I wanted to share this with you guys I'm really not sure why it's doing this twisting when it didn't do it the other time but I think it has something to do with it, it has almost twice the uh, vertical uh, area and I'm a little bit surprised by that I didn't expect that just simply one more panorama series would yield that much more information uh, for uh, the panorama itself but it, it did so this is um, I'm pretty interested in this this is this is pretty cool and again you can kind of see the holes that we have uh, filled in and I don't know I'm gonna have to try some experiments with uh, changing the perspective maybe in the XY plane keeping it at the same altitude yet um, moving it in its XY plane to see if we can't fill in some of these holes where it's uh, you know because here here's uh, uh, orthographic and you notice we have a hole in the top and then we have a hole in the bottom but uh, this is pretty interesting we can spin it around uh, again, this this is rather interesting. So again, we we've achieved. I think I've used it again many times. Uh, however, we've pretty much achieved a 360 degree panorama out of the spark just simply by uh, stitching together multiple 180 panoramas. And I think this, you know, in a 360 viewer uh, would work very well because this is not bad shape at all. And um, you know, I'm just a little bit sad I didn't I didn't have it all the way over the spillway. What I would have liked is the spillway to be contiguous rather than broken right here where the, the spark didn't cover it down here in the bottom. So it'd be kind of nice to be able to travel up and down the complete spillway instead of having this uh, hole down here. So I'm going to try some more experiments with that, so uh, look for it. If you guys have been trying any experiments with the uh, spark in, the, in panoramas, and especially 360 panoramas, let me know in the comments below uh, how it's going for you. Uh, because again, this is uh, a significant improvement. I think I'm gonna when I get time to go back out in the field, I'm gonna shoot one, um, you know, with even more panoramas. I may go up to six or maybe even eight panoramas. Uh, I think I can pretty much get eight in a flight. I'll just have to figure out how to set up and do some alignments. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, tutorial a little bit of a tutorial a little bit of demonstration which you can do with uh, ice and the spark uh, really just the the whole thing just continues to amaze me for the package and what you can do with it so anyways if this amazed you too hey be sure to hit that thumbs up definitely helps me out uh, 
improves my algorithms and uh, brings views to the channel and subscribers, which, uh, you know, I'm reaching more people. And uh, what are you guys thinking about for lunch today? I'm a little bit uh, Mexican. That's what it is. I'm up for some tacos. So what do you guys think about tacos for lunch today? Anyways, uh, don't forget to subscribe button, comments below as always, and hey, we'll catch you in the next video when we're thinking about lunch. Cheers.